Hello, everyone. Nice to see you all. Uh, this is Brijesh Desai. I am the program slash product manager in the enterprise cloud team within M365 core. And uh, my colleague Chris Warren, unfortunately, he's not able to make it today, but he's also one of the product managers working on Exchange Customer Key. So we are really glad to have you all here and uh, we'll be covering, giving you the overview of the Exchange Customer Key Service. And also I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have either along the way or towards the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, but again, yeah, thank you so much for joining. So let me start sharing for one second. I'll enable my computer audio to make sure you are able to also hear the demo audio properly. All right, so let's get into it. So uh, we'll start with the uh, overview of the encryption in M365. This is the overall M365 you know, landscape in terms of uh, how data is encrypted, both in transit as well as when data is stored more permanently at rest in our data centers. Then we'll talk about the next level, level of encryption for application data, which is called service encryption and then talk about different flavors of service encryption in terms of uh, encrypting the customer data using uh, Microsoft or platform managed keys by default, and also providing the ability for customers to bring their own keys called customer key for exchange online. I will talk a little bit about the availability key, one of the topics the where you know is, is, customers uh, um, have questions other, and- about, um, yeah. All right, yeah, I think there was some uh, audio in between, but I think we are good now. Uh, so we'll talk about the availability key a little bit, and then at the end, uh, I'll give you an overview of the some of the commandlets that are uh, available to exchange tenant administrators to be able to create a policy, assign a policy, monitor the state of the policy, so on and so forth. And there is a demo recorded by Chris that will be playing. Uh, for you to get more visual representation of uh, how these things work uh, from the tenant admin experience point of view. And at the end, as, as I said, we'll take any questions as well. And if you have uh, any other questions that you want to kind of, you know, also bring up, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try to answer that either uh, during or after the presentation, right? So, all right, so let's get into the encryption overview. So as you could see uh, on this uh, diagram here on the left, there is encryption for data in transit. On the right, there is encryption for data at rest. When, it, when we talk about encryption for data in transit, it starts with you know, your network layer encryption followed by anything that is over the wire in terms of you know, your messages being sent from the server to the client and back and forth from client to client communication like such, such as Office message encryption and so on and so forth. So those are the capabilities that are provided as part of the underlying infrastructure or the different services that reside on top of it. Uh, that's data in transit. Office message encryption is owned by a different team. If anybody is interested, I'll be happy to put you in touch with the right contacts so that you can learn more about it as well. And there is lots of public documentation that's also available around it. And then we talk about data at rest. Uh, that's when your uh, customer data is actually residing more permanently on our data centers. And that's where for certain workloads, like for example, Exchange Online in particular, each of the backend servers have BitLocker, are BitLocker enabled, right? So there is that uh, encryption that happens at the volume level, encrypting the content using BitLocker. And on top of that, we have the service encryption, which I talked about earlier very briefly, is where your application data, such as your data for Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Microsoft Teams, and in future uh, additional workloads get encrypted using a different set of keys, uh, which is called as service encryption. And within that, there are two flavors. By default, all of the Exchange backend servers, all the forests are enabled with what is called as the uh, Microsoft managed key based encryption. So all of the data across all the exchange forests worldwide, including in the Gov Cloud environment, like US Gov Cloud environment, it is encrypted by default using Microsoft managed keys. And then customers, those customers who are coming from more highly 
uh, regulated industries like finance, healthcare, manufacturing, public sector, etc., in need of encrypting data using their own keys, we offer this feature called Exchange Online Customer Key. And that's what we'll be talking more about in today's uh, presentation. So talking about service encryption in, in more detail here, as I mentioned earlier, it's an application level of encryption for data at rest. It uh, adds added data protection on top of BitLocker, which also provides that added separation or isolation right from the data uh, uh, from your backend server management versus your application data. So even the data center administrators who may be managing the servers and have access to BitLocker keys are deploying OS patches and whatever else do not have access to the keys that are encrypting the application data. In this case, the exchange online data, because that is now encrypted using a different set of keys that are stored in Key Vault that only the service has access to. And in case of the customers, it is the customer key vault administrator who has access to those keys and not the Microsoft operator or the engineer who is actually managing these servers in the back end. So it provides with you with that added layer of encryption, which adds to your defense in depth capability for the exchange online data. Now, all of these operations that happen as part of exchange customer key are all well documented and they go through the annual SOC 2 audit with external auditors. And these annual reports also get published on the service trust portal. So uh, you are more than uh, you know welcome to take a look at those. It describes in detail uh, the different controls that are audited by the external auditors as well. So you can take a look as well. Uh, now, that is the overview of service encryption when now we'll talk more about the customer key based encryption, uh, which is kind of uh, uh, one of the implementation of service encryption as I talked about earlier. As you could see in this diagram, on the very left of the diagram on the right, which says forest level policy using Microsoft managed keys. This is the default encryption across all exchange forests that happen without any customer action, right? So this is taken care by Microsoft. Uh, and we have one policy per forest that will then encrypt all of the mailboxes data for all the tenants within that forest by default. Now that works uh, by default. In addition to that, now if the customers want to bring their own keys, they have two options. One is what we call as a tenant level policy assignment using a service called M365 Data at Rest Encryption which allows the tenant administrators to create an encryption policy using their own keys and assign it to the tenant, which in turn starts encrypting all of their exchange mailboxes data for all the tenant users across the board using that tenant level policy, using the keys that are managed by the customer. So it's called a multi workload policy, which works at the tenant level. This is the capability we introduced about, you know, a uh, year and a half back, which is called the M365 Data at Rest Encryption, also known as Multi Workload Policy. Now, for Exchange Online in particular, in addition to this tenant level policy, so if customers want more granularity and say, hey, you know, this tenant level policy is great, but I want more control and I want to create certain policies for a subset of users and assign those policies to those subset of mailboxes then Exchange Online does offer that capability through Exchange Customer Key, which is the top uh, uh, of this diagram, which is mailbox level policy using Customer Key, where a tenant administrator using their own keys can create a policy and assign it to a set of mailboxes within the tenant. Uh, so that is called as mailbox level encryption. So as you could see, there's a default encryption. On top of that, there is customer key based encryption. And when it when it comes to customer key based encryption, there are two flavors, a tenant level policy that works more globally for all tenant users. And there is also the exchange mailbox level policy assignment, which allows them uh, to get more granular in terms of the policy assignment. Both the tenant level policy and the mailbox level policy, they require their own separate onboarding from the customer point of view because it has certain prerequisites that the tenant has to meet in order for it to qualify for customer key enablement. And we'll talk about those prerequisites towards the end of this presentation as well. 
and uh, kind of you know give you an idea about what that actually looks like. So I'll pause for a moment here and see if there are any immediate questions from what we just you know talked about. All right. If not, then I'll kind of you know move forward. Uh, here's an example of an exchange mailbox level policy. As you could see on the diagram on the right, uh, it starts with your mailboxes content. So at the very end, it is the mailboxes that are stored in the exchange backend on the exchange servers. Those mailboxes are always encrypted using what is called as a mailbox encryption key. That is managed by the exchange service itself, the exchange uh, online service team. What we offer is on top of that, the ability for customers to bring their own keys and being able to encrypt the mailbox key using what is called as a data encryption policy key. So that middle layer that is shown in this key hierarchy diagram, which says data encryption policy key, that key gets generated when the tenant administrator creates a data encryption policy using their own customer managed root keys, which are on the top left of this diagram, which says two customer keys protected by Azure Key Vault, using which the tenant administrator creates a policy, which results into the creation of a data encryption policy key. And once that policy is assigned to a specific mailbox, the data encryption policy key is used to wrap or encrypt the mailbox key using the data encryption policy key. So effectively, in order for you for the customer or the users to access the mailbox data or even for the other system operations to be able to access the mailboxes data it requires the mailbox key in clear that mailbox key to be in clear requires access to the data encryption policy key in clear which requires access to the two customer managed root keys so without access to the root keys uh, one cannot decrypt the data encryption policy key and this effectively encrypts the mailboxes data using the customer managed keys. Uh, OK, so there is a question here. It says, is this the option known as customer managed key where the customer has the option to revoke the keys or is it another way, new way? So yeah, so this is the option which is called customer managed keys where yes, the customers do have the option to revoke access to the keys and then uh, also request what is called as a purging of a policy at which case the availability key that you see on the right hand side of this diagram at the very top also gets purged and we'll talk more about it down the line about the availability key its purpose and its purge operation as part of the policy purge but you are right that customer managed key does allow customers to be able to revoke access to the keys and then uh, go through what is called as a purge operation if they really want to crypto delete all the mailboxes data that is encrypted using that particular policy that is requested to be purged. Right. So, and then so a little bit about availability key, and we'll go into more details. But it's a, it's a more of a, a backup key just in case the customer managed root keys are inaccessible to the service, and the service only accesses availability key when both the customer managed root keys are inaccessible. The reason we have two keys that are part of a policy is because if one key is inaccessible for whatever reason, the service will go to the second key and try to decrypt the data encryption policy key. But for whatever reason, either due to transient issues reaching to Azure Key Vault or due to more permanent access denied issues for the root keys, then uh, the service will reach the, uh, will call the availability key to decrypt the data encryption policy key. But if the customers end up revoking access to one or two of their own root keys, the service will generate an alert and we as a feature team will come to know that an, that one of one or two, one or both of the customer managed, managed root keys are inaccessible. We reach out to the tenant administrator through message center post and let the administrator know that this is what we are observing. Is this intentional? If not, then please reinstate access to your keys. If it is intentional, then if they are wanting to purge the data policy, the encryption policy, then they have to go through the purge operation for which there are steps that are well documented in our public documentation. So that's how this uh, policy uh, kind of you know comes into into play. Any other questions on this topic? All right. Now let's talk more about the availability key. So I described one scenario where it is about the 
a uh, high availability of the service when you know due to transient issues due to maybe network issues or ad issues or azure key vault issues if the service is unable to reach to key vault then it will uh, access the availability key for a limited set of operations so say if the customer has revoked access to both the root keys and even if the service accesses the key availability key to do some back end operations all the user logons to those to their individual mailboxes are going to be blocked so users won't be able to log into their mailboxes if both the customer managed root keys are inaccessible to the service at which point the availability key will be used to do some back end system operations like say a mailbox load balancing or you know e discovery and whatever happens or from the system end but any user facing actions that require user credentials and auth they will be blocked because something from the customer end has revoked access to the keys so we want to make sure that that is quite visible and front and center of the customers now the other two reasons why availability key exist is that sometimes customers make a mistake they by mistake delete the availability key, sorry the customer manage root keys or they are not able to restore it or whatever issues may happen because we have availability key there is an option to recover the data by decrypting the data encryption policy key using availability key and re-encrypting using new set of keys that the customer may bring into place to encrypt those set of mailboxes the other scenario is more of the defense in depth which is to protect against any insider threat or any kind of you know malicious users or rogue users that are from within the tenant that have somehow gotten access to the keys and have revoked access we are going to let the tenant administrator know but the fact that there is availability key the data is still uh, recoverable if the customer has found that this was an incorrect thing or something bad happened in their tenant so we have those three main reasons why availability key exists and whenever the service uses the availability key there is an audit record that gets placed into customer facing audit logs so it's completely visible in fact some of the customers have written their own alerts based on this record generation so that they also come to know that hey by the way my service has now switched over to availability key let me go see what happened to my keys right so uh, some sort of proactive engagement uh, can also take place if customers want to do it that way without waiting to hear from us through a message center post so that is uh, also there so that's the kind of the availability key usage part and its existence now when i talk about the availability key logging as a tenant administrator when you go to m365 admin portal the administrator will be able to look at pull the availability key logs using the audit log search they can you know type in fall back to availability key in the search box that is shown here uh, and then it will pull all the records uh, audit records where the availability key came into existence and this uh, audit record uses the standard schema that's already out there so it's really easy for customers to parse the record and be able to as i said generate their own alerts or whatever whatever other actions they want to take based on the record that they see in the audit log all right so that's about the data encryption policy and the availability key and the customer managed keys now let's look at some of the scenarios from the tenant administrator point of view once a tenant is onboarded to using exchange customer key the tenant administrator has access to a set of commandlets to create a policy to manage the policy to assign a policy and so on and so forth uh, and uh, you could assign the administrator can assign these policies to different types of mailboxes like user mailbox mail user shared folders public folders so on and so forth right and for a given tenant uh, up to 50 active data encryption policies can be there at a time there could be more in terms of any disabled you know depths but as far as the active data encryption policies is concerned the current limit is 50 but we have hardly seen customers using more than two or three data encryption policies for that tenant because it requires management on part of the customer whenever they create a data encryption policy and for the most part customers are happy with a single policy some of them end up creating maybe a couple of more policies 
if they want to kind of you know have different keys used for different uh, set of users to encrypt their content. Uh, so with that in mind, I'll play the video recorded by Chris Warren, uh, and then uh, we'll kind of you know go through, look at uh, some of the scenarios of uh, uh, encryption policy management. Hello everyone, thank you for attending the Customer Key and Exchange Online session. In this quick demo, I'll be showing how a tenant admin can apply a data encryption policy to a shared mailbox. Our starting point is in Windows PowerShell after I've logged in using admin credentials. I want to create a new data encryption policy to assign to a mailbox. So therefore, I'd use a commandlet called new data encryption policy. The parameters of the commandlet are the name of the policy. In this case, it's Exchange Online DEP. Description, which is a short description for the data encryption policy, and Azure key IDs, which are the key URIs to the two keys that this data encryption policy will use to encrypt the mailbox. As you can see, after this data encryption policy is created, it returns the name of the policy, and you can see that it's enabled. Data encryption policies can be assigned to various types of mailboxes, such as user mailboxes, group mailboxes, shared mailboxes, and more. For the purposes of this demo, I will show how this data encryption policy can be assigned to a shared mailbox. Here, I will create a new mailbox and instantiate it by using the new mailbox command. To make the process simple, I'm assigning the mailbox I created to a variable M so I can easily reference it from now on. I now use the commandlet test MAPI connectivity to verify the server connectivity to this specific mailbox. As you can see, it's successful and I created the mailbox. When one creates a mailbox, it's encrypted by default using the Microsoft Managed Key, or MMK for short. Once I assign the mailbox with the data encryption policy that I made, the mailbox will get rewrapped using the customer keys identified in the data encryption policy. I'll do this by using the set mailbox command list. This process may take a few hours to happen, so the default encryption will stay applied until the step is encrypted. All right, it's been a few hours, so now I'm back and I want to confirm that the data encryption policy I signed is the one that's set to this mailbox, and I want to verify that it was encrypted. I can use the commandlet get mailbox statistics and filter by the data encryption policy ID, as well as the is encrypted field. This returns the data encryption policy ID that is used to encrypt this mailbox, and it returns whether this mailbox is encrypted or not. As you can see that I know this mailbox is encrypted because it is encrypted and set to true. And now I can verify that this data encryption policy ID corresponds to the data encryption policy that I just made using the get data encryption policy command. As you can see, this is set to exchange online DEP, which is the one I made earlier. As an admin for a tenant, you may come across a scenario where you need to disable a data encryption policy. Customer key has a convenient feature for this so that admins can easily enable or disable the data encryption policy as needed. Please note that in order to disable a data encryption policy, it must be unassigned first. I will try disabling the data encryption policy without unassigning it to show that it will return an error. Here, it returns an error that says, can't disable data encryption policy because it's associated with objects. Now, first, I'll unassign the data encryption policy from this mailbox.
I do this by, again, using the set mailbox command, but now setting the dating encryption policy field to null. I'm back again, so now I can just disable the policy by setting the enable tag to false on the set data encryption policy command line. It's going to give me a warning. I'm going to say yes. And now this command line worked. I can now verify that this is disabled by using the get data encryption policy command line with the name of the policy. As you can see, now the enabled column is set to false. As you can see, customer key in Exchange Online was made so that tenant admins could easily control how their data is encrypted all the way down to the mailbox level. I only showed a small selection of many different command lines you could use with the customer key. More information on these keys are available in the appendix section of this presentation. Thank you for listening to this demo, and I hope this was informative. Yeah, so <clears throat> that was kind of a short demo about how to create and assign a mailbox level encryption policy, how to disable an existing policy by first unassigning it from a mailbox or a set of mailboxes and then being able to disable it as well. Right. So uh, but there are, as Chris mentioned, there are many other command lists that are available to tenant administrator to look at the policy details to be able to set some of the properties and so on and so forth to be able to request purging of a policy and, and, and so forth. So all that is available in our public documentation that you can access, uh, you have access to. Now, uh, before going further, I'll just take a pause and see if there are any questions on what we talked about so far. And then I want to kind of touch upon some of the prerequisites for onboarding a tenant to customer key. And then we'll talk about the offboarding scenario where customer wants to again, you know, come back to default encryption using MMK and also the DAP purge scenario where customer decides to purge uh, an exchange mailbox level policy and what that means. Uh, any questions uh, so far? All right, if not, then yeah, let's uh, continue. Uh, in terms of the minimum setup requirements for onboarding a tenant to exchange customer key, we require the tenant to make an official request using fast track and you know provide some preliminary information as part of onboarding uh, the tenant to using exchange customer key. The customer would require two paid Azure subscriptions. Those subscriptions need to go through a special tagging called uh, what we call as a do not cancel or mandatory retention period registration. There are command lists available for customers to request that registration. And upon that, there is a backend operation that takes place from the Azure Commerce side to tag those subscriptions because we want to make sure that the subscriptions that are used to host the encryption keys that are encrypting the actual mailbox data through the key hierarchy are all well protected. So there are these additional uh, provisions that are put in place to protect the keys through soft delete and the key vaults through soft delete as well as the subscriptions through this uh, do not cancel registration. Then once they have two subscriptions which are, which are properly tagged, the customers will create two key vaults, one in each of the two subscriptions and two RSA keys. We support different key lengths up to 4096. Uh, customers can create one key per key vault. They are actually required to create one key per key vault. And then once that is all set up, uh, they have to grant the Exchange Online service permissions to do three operations using those keys. One is called get, which is getting access to those keys, wrap and unwrap, so that the keys can be accessed by the service to only uh, uh, perform these set of operations. And once all of that is completed and we verify the recovery level on the keys, we will enable the tenant for exchange online customer key. And once the tenant is enabled uh, or onboarded to customer key is when all the commandlets that we just saw become available, accessible to the tenant administrator to manage the policy uh, assignment and its uh, life cycle. Now, so that was the onboarding experience and the prerequisites related to that. 
Uh, let's talk about the offboarding and the purge of the policies. Now, offboarding is a scenario where a tenant for some reason decides that, hey, you know, I onboarded to customer key, uh, but now for whatever reason, I want to go back to default encryption using Microsoft managed keys because I'm happy with the way, you know, that is dealt with. I don't want to go through the additional overhead of managing my own keys and so on and so forth. There is a process uh, through which they can offboard. Now for Exchange Online Encryption, it's it's kind of easy operation because we have a, the set mailbox commandlet that allows the tenant administrator to assign a null policy to a mailbox. So when you assign a null policy to the mailbox, that mailbox will recognize that I don't have a specific customer key Exchange Mailbox level encryption policy assigned to me. And then it will, what it will do is that mailbox will look up in the hierarchy and see what is the next level of policy that is in effect for this tenant. If, if there is a tenant level customer key policy that exists, uh, if you remember earlier, we looked at like two flavors of the customer key policies. One is the tenant level encryption using the M365 data at rest encryption service. And the other one was the mailbox level policy using the exchange customer key. So if that tenant level policy is already assigned to the tenant, and if they unassign the mailbox level policy, then the rewrap will happen using the tenant level policy. It will still be customer key based encryption, but using the tenant level policy, which is more global, not granular. But if that tenant level policy does not exist for the tenant, the customer has not onboarded, not created that policy or not assigned, then by default, everything kind of goes back to what is called as MMK, Microsoft Managed Key Based Encryption, that mailboxes data, all the mailboxes that were encrypted using the unassigned policy for which there is no tenant level policy will start getting rewrapped using Microsoft Managed Keys. And it will remain in that state until later, whenever if the customer decides to re-onboard to customer key, and then again, the rewrap can happen using the customer key hierarchy. So that's kind of makes it easy for customers to go back and forth. We don't recommend that, but that option is available if they want to uh, switch between customer key and MMK. Uh, OK, there's a question in terms of is there any mailbox access outage during rewrapping of keys? The answer is no, there is no mailbox access outage. Uh, the service handles it uh, seamlessly anytime there is the access request to the ex to exchange about a specific mailbox. It makes a query and checks whether there is a change in the policy for this mailbox. If there is a change, then our service will notify exchange and it will do the rewrap using the new policy. And from the user point of view, it is all seamless. There is no outage uh, that they have to experience because of that. So that is the offboarding scenario. Uh, and then the purge scenario that we talked about a little bit earlier, where the availability key also gets deleted as part of the purge operation. Now, this is a very involved scenario in the sense that it will end up customer losing access to all of the encrypted data. If they decide to revoke access to their keys, make a purge request, go through the purge process, and at the end, uh, ask Microsoft to delete the availability key, like grant permissions to Microsoft to delete the availability key. If that happens, then at the end of the process, both the root keys and the customer, the availability key are gone. There is no key available to decrypt that data encryption policy key in the key hierarchy. So the underlying data will always stay encrypted. It is called crypto deleted. And when the customer actually deprovisions from the service or the tenant, then that data gets more permanently cleaned up as part of uh, based on the retention policies of that uh, exchange online as a as a workload, right? So that is that. Now the purge because of its sensitivity requires the customer to sign what we call as an e-document that we send them uh, through Adobe Sign. Uh, so customer two representatives from the customer end has to authorize the deletion of uh, a particular policy. Once we receive that authorization, we will also get internal approvals and then only execute the deletion of a particular policy or the purging of the policy and deletion of the availability key. So far, no customer has gone through this path in the production environment. 
a couple of them have tested it in the test environment, but nobody has done it in production. Uh, but the uh, option does exist if uh, customers want to exercise it. So that's the offboarding and the customer key policy purge scenarios. There is more documentation available uh, uh, as there is a link here that you can also take a look at to learn more about the purge scenario and different steps that are involved in that process. So yeah, I think that is what I had in terms of the overall uh, overview and the scenarios and you know a couple of special cases that we talked about and the demo. So any questions uh, that you have or anything else uh, you want to share regarding requirements or you know uh, anything in general about Exchange Customer Key? Are you all like uh, familiar with this or uh, are you kind of using this on more uh, regular basis or, you know, have you heard from customers or, you know, for your own self, the need for such things, anything uh, if you would like to share? Yeah. OK, completely new area. OK, hopefully uh, we have given you enough information to get started, uh, Andres. Yeah. All right, I'll stick around for a couple of minutes uh, if there are any other questions. Otherwise, you know, feel free to drop off. But yeah, thank you so much for your participation. Uh, we hope you found this useful. And as uh, Jill mentioned, uh, yeah, please uh, take a look at uh, the uh, uh, survey link and then I will be looking forward to your feedback as well. Uh, OK, there's a question about how many percentage of tenants use it? OK, it's a good question. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this feature is uh, only opted by customers from highly regulated industries for the most part, especially in the production environment. Uh, it's a very, very small percentage of the overall exchange online tenants that actually end up uh, using this feature because we do have the default encryption using MMK. Because of the additional work that uh, administrators have to go through, unless the customers have their own regulatory requirement to prove to their auditors that uh, they are encrypting data using customer key hierarchy, um, then they don't actually you know, end up using it. So it's a very, very small percentage uh, of tenants there. Uh, another question, when new mailboxes are created, how can a DEP be automatically applied? OK, also a good question. So. If you have a tenant level policy already assigned through the M365 data at rest encryption service, then what happens is that any new mailbox, uh, so first of all, even before that, any new mailbox by default will get encrypted using Microsoft Managed Key without any action or any customer action. But if the customer wants to encrypt it using the customer key based policy, then if there is a tenant level policy already assigned, then also that encryption will be automatic for any new mailbox that gets created into that environment for that particular tenant. Only when they want to assign a specific exchange online mailbox level policy is when they, the tenant administrator has to take this specific action to assign a policy using set mailbox command led to a specific set of mailboxes, right? Uh, but the otherwise the default encryption and any tenant level encryption if that policy exists is all automatic. So that's that. Uh, I think there is one more question or comment. Our firm needs something like this due to financial plan requirements. Have found it hard to find many knowledgeable folks with this technology and also correct licensing for it. Um, yeah, Amit, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out uh, offline as well. Uh, as far as licensing is concerned, yeah, that's one thing I think I forgot to mention earlier. This is kind of an E5 feature, so customer needs to have the customer key service plan which is offered through E5, G5, A5 category of SKUs. Uh, and if they have that, uh, so those set of licenses, customer key can be enabled for the tenant. But if you are looking for more specific details, uh, we'll be happy to you know, have a one of conversation with you. All right.
OK, that's good to know, Amit. Yeah. All right, thank you everyone. Have a nice day and yeah, I wish you all the very best.